Leonard Nimoy. We talk about white beaters that were so overwhelmingly brutal until the wives was even had nervous conditions that couldn't even hardly talk about it on TV. But they didn't make movies about those particular ones, Michael Landon, and they still can go on heroes. And as a matter of fact, Leonard Nimoy is looked on as a stature figure of great intellect and morality because he is the voice behind ancient mysteries on A and E now. That carried over from the old in search of program. So he is looked on as a high figure that they would have him as the narrator of ancient mysteries, Leonard Nimoy. You see, and he was also on NBC carried it for a while. But they didn't make movies about, uh, about him. So this movie about Tina, Tina Turner that, this, that they actually researched after the, basically after Pearl Cleage's book, Mad at Miles, you know, basically is, they set it up for the O.J. Simpson thing also too. So very key to understand that. As well as the anniversary movie to the great movie that polarized black relationships in 1985 called Color Purple, done by a black author. The anniversary movie that was the 10-year anniversary of Color Purple in 1995 was, uh, was the movie um, uh, Waiting to Exhale, which to celebrate the 10-year anniversary also done by a black author and female, to celebrate that also too. And basically, based on the movie, not only was there not a positive black man in the movie, see, it was a little different with Color Purple, although they had the lesbian act going. You had some sympathy for Whoopi Goldberg being raped for her father, with, with the father and the other girl being run off. But, in, in, but unlike Color Purple, what we didn't realize, there wasn't a positive figure in the movie waiting to exhale at all. You see what I'm saying? At all. I mean, even the sisters, is that the, is the remedy to, is the remedy to, to counter the man's pathology is for you to jump into bed with somebody's husband. You see what I'm saying? And so even though we say, well, you know, that ain't so bad, but then again, we understand that this is the way the European and the whole world view us. So to jump into bed with somebody's husband is not the actual remedy. So Angela Bassett was one, 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 one figure at one time, and she slapped the hell out of the white woman. But she was one figure you could sympathize with, but she went and jumped in the bed with Wesley Snipes, who was all in love and, 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 and talked about how he held this white woman as the greatest thing in his life and put her on a, on a pedestal. As a matter of fact, this white woman that he talked about was probably the greatest thing in the movie, the way he held her up. So the other sister, Gregory Hines, the one that Gregory Hines was with, the other sister that finally got a man after a rebound of her husband being a homosexual, but you say it was a positive thing, but hell, she was due for one. She had been in hell for damn near. Like the other ones, they were new starting out in their hell. But she had been in the hell for about 15 years. So she was due for some relief. You see, so. <laughs> so I'm saying when we look at this, and all and, and you know, in Oprah, she, they, and they was talking about how they had all these waiting to exhale parties. But we got to understand, okay, yes, this is a bad thing that's going on in our community, but you got to understand the timing of things coming on, coming at the same time when black people are in crisis. You see what I'm saying? All over the world, especially here in the United States, black people being in a social crisis and dying wholesale. Then you used to put something out like that. And remember, the white boy, when it deals with us in the movies, he always has an ulterior motive. And he didn't put stuff out because he, he wanted to, he was concerned with the welfare of black women. You see what I'm saying? The same welfare that he's only viewed black women as hoes or big fat maids. And remember Whoopi Goldberg, the reason why Whoopi Goldberg makes more movies than most, that, than Angela Bassett and all those is because Whoopi Goldberg played a maid in four different movies. A long, uh, what's that, a long, a long, a long, walk, long walk home. Clara's Heart, Karina Karina, and this other one with um, this little, this, this, this French guy, John, this French guy, and, 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 and the little white, she's taking care of this white boy, and he's got a hell of imagination. And she's the maid to this little white boy. So they make sure that they, they put her up because she 
represents the 1930 Hattie McDaniel type, type stuff, you see what I mean? And so therefore, this is the reason why she makes these types of movies or they would make these types of movies or she would get more roles. So you gotta understand the pathology of the European. The European's pathology is, is he like only two people is black. He likes young children and he likes older people. Why? Because a young person does not pose a threat to him and an older person doesn't pose a threat to him. But that young black male and female between the ages of 15 to 50 poses a problem with him. And you, that's why Morgan Freeman starts getting all these roles. Or even um, um, the Danny Glover when he's up in his 40s get these roles. But any young virile black man, you see, can't share the world stage with a Tom Cruise and those particular people because he knows about his sexuality that he feels inferior. And it's the same thing. White people in this day, you can see little white women and white men that just love a little black child. Oh, look at them. And they like an old black man or old black woman. They like those because those don't pose any threat. But God help a black person between those ages and stuff. You see what I'm saying? You need a job. You see, and all kinds of stuff like this. Are oh, you a common criminal? So these are things we got to understand the pathology of this particular European and how he does things or, or how he does things. So let's deal with some other things at this particular time. Uh, let's see where we're going with this thing. Uh, like I said, also, if you get the movie, I think the movie, uh, one of the Alpha Hitchcock movies, they show the, the court in England where they wear the white wigs, and I talked about that. And the white wigs also, their white wigs are always curly in the top, which also represents the, the Lamb of Christ with the woolly hair. But the, the judge's wig is all nappy. It's right to throw you off, because if you seen them with nappy wigs on, you would get it right off. But they, 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 show them, they show that it's all nappy, the judge's wig is all nappy, to show that in actuality, ultimately, we are the judge. And it's dealing with the Osirian drama as well as the mysteries of the mysteries of um, the mysteries of the Lamb in the Book of Revelation, or, or, or Jesus, the, the woolly head. You see, uh, the Jesus, the Lamb's wool in the Book of Revelation. So therefore, they understand that the Osirian drama as being the great judge. You see what I'm saying? Uh, the, the the great judge. Oh, so now these are some things that I recap. Except, so what happened is, is um. I've gone to Philadelphia and I spoke, and there's a lot of things that you need to catch up with that we need to document for, um, that we need to document for, uh, for New York, you could have it on tape. And, uh, and so uh, uh, I want to deal with these particular things right now as far as the music industry. <laughs> now, you made a good point when you said that now everything is oldest but goldest, yeah. which I enjoy. You see what I'm saying? Which I enjoy, but this post, uh, and so sometimes when people say things, those are channels. See, it's something spiritual why you would even register that. And what she said, the Sister Myra here that, 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 that I, that I uh, spent the night over to her crib last night, and um, um, that I, I've, I've stayed at her house several times. As a matter of fact, I stayed at your place the first time in New York. Um, but she made an observation last night. She made an observation last night, and I'm going to check it with the tarot cards right now to see if this particular observation is right. And, and first of all, I'm going to ask the tarot cards. First of all, let me ask the tarot cards. Tarot, uh, uh, Newt did the observation on the, on the old music, or the go, only the golden music that Sister Myra said last night. Was that adequate? Let's see what I get here. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me make sure I rephrase it, let, let me make sure I phrase it right. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. The observation that Sister Myra made on the, on the black music, the oldest but goldest, was that correct, Newt? Yeah, yeah, it was correct. Now, let me explain what's going on. They understand by studying us that we have progressed through the years through our music. 
Our music is the only thing that acted as a medicine to keep us sane in an oppressive world. So, just as the music goes to certain levels, because they understand our music is metaphysical. And our original classic called jazz also started from Vodun, voodoo, of the New Orleans Vodun Society that fused in Vodun rhythms into the same Sousa band music of the Europeans, where they just had this straight European marching band music, and they soothed it, and they, and they, uh, they fused in this particular uh, music, this Vodun music, and made jazz. And based on that, jazz is also the focus of both, both, both um, funk, rap, because that's in the form of scat, which is the bebop, on into, on into any kind of music, as well as rock and roll, you understand? And also blues is also a form of that, which would be the essence of the soul part. So now the key is that the music would progress to a certain level. And it's the music that is meta metaphysical. So as a result, they cut out basically black music. As a matter of fact, since 1990, you haven't heard any new stuff. Because the, first of all, rap, although rap being an art form, rap is voice. But the music under rap is old sample music from the 70s. Right, huh? 60s. And the 60s or whatever they can get their hands on and speed up or whatever. So the key is, although rap is a fine art form for certain, for, but, but, but for the only thing that you hear on radio now is rap and a little bit of slow songs is ludicrous. You see what I'm saying? It's got to be a combination of a several disciplines. And as a result, most of the stuff you hear now in the rap is old music this, this, that, you know, that they come out and use a lot of, you know, all this stuff. You say, when people say, oh, this song sounds so good. I'm like, well, I can't get into it. Why? I said, because I got that in my album collection. And I'm going to hear something new. Although I love old music, I go play the original version, which is better. So the key is, but there's no new music being made since 1990. Now the key is, is this. In order to not let you progress, if you have memories of the 70s, or memories of the music that was made back then, or that is positive, if the new music is coming out that's current on the radio is that of the 70s, and you're supposed to be going into the year 2000, you see what I'm saying? Then you're not progressing and it can keep your mind on a certain level. Now, it's interesting because Prince had a fight with the record companies because he wanted to produce the kind of music that he wanted to produce going into the 90s, but they wouldn't let him do it until he just got, got cleared. George Michael, who won the night, and, and, and not, I'm using him as an example because he was one to battle with the radio station. Although George Michael was a white boy from England, he won the Soul Album of the Year, 1988. But George Michael said that they also wanted him to stick with the Wham thing and stick with what Soul at that particular time, but knowing in actuality if he didn't progress his music, they were stopping everybody that they had to battle with. And basically, all Soul artists and stuff, basically in the 1990s, they just basically destroyed that particular music. Now as a result, what has happened here is it's the music is stagnant right now, and basically, although the art form is good, but if you are anyone over damn 18 or over 25, it's good, but it's not enough. Because really, there's no, no, good, no good music out here. As a matter of fact, it gets to the point where as it's actually annoying sometimes to even listen to things, you see what I'm saying? And it will give you a headache. And the reason why it will give you a headache is the simple fact that it is because in the recording studios, the major recording studios, there's a door and they have a guard with a machine gun guarding that door. And that is because this is the actual place when you make your recording, when you make your recording, they go in and they put the undercurrent stuff up under there that is stuff that is subliminal seduction that drives the black man and black woman crazy. And this is why you got killing and stuff going on. And, and if it's not killing, it's just negative attitudes and different things. And the reason why that is is because they are using to program you through the music. You understand? Uh -huh. 
So therefore, if you listen to any new music, it don't have to be rap. It can be the slow stuff that's out now, because it's not really good slow stuff. If you listen to it, it will. You can't take it, but so long it give you a headache. Mm -hmm. What's that? Um, I just wanted to say, Joe Holcomb says in terms of listening to the radio, anything less than a hundred megahertz is antagonistic to our melody. Right. So you know they, 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 and everything is set up that particular way. It's just like in Atlanta, the projects are painted with a high beige yellow. The projects. And knowing based on certain colors, although they might be beautiful in certain things, but to live in this high intensity yellow all the time, these colors are so violent until they tear you apart. And so they, 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 there's several colors that they pick, just uh, certain colors that they pick in most black places, like you say, you said the welfare center. The, it's not, and they do that, and it's to drive you crazy. So the part, but the actual projects in Atlanta are these high colors to drive you crazy. Yeah. And especially in this particular time, because like I mentioned, the guy Ola Kuhn. Ola Kuhn is the, e, is the, Ola Kuhn, you don't hear of Ola Kuhn. You hear of the seven African powers, but you don't hear a lot of Ola Kuhn or Oshosis. But Ola Kuhn is the Yoruba virgin of Osiris that is chained down at the bottom of the ocean. Osiris is, is, is bound in the underworld. But Oshosi, the energy now that Oshosi has risen to a certain level, and, 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 and actually they're saying that Oshosi has risen and is talking about energy frequencies that has risen now, and he deals with undercurrent thoughts. And so therefore you have people that used to hide their feelings to you and you, it would take you to know them a while to understand that these people are no good. Now, when you meet these people, you can automatically tell when a person is no good. <laughs> you see, it, you can't, because the undercurrent thoughts now, the undercurrent thoughts now, they can't hide them anymore. That is because based on the energy. So now you can tell, you can, you, and basically a person don't have to talk. You can somehow look at people and say, I don't like you for some reason. Right. And sometimes you might go, well, that's a little, that's a bit prejudiced, a bit unfair. But that's your spirit saying things because based on energy alone. And also, and that's also to ward out to keep you to understand that in the particular fact that certain people that have bad dispositions or they call obnoxious, sin uh, 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 not, uh, they call it obnoxious syndromes deficiency. Those particular people, right away you can tell, and that's to, to, to warn you against those particular people because that's the type of energy. What happens is this when energy rises. It's just like cleaning out. You know when you take a colon cleanser or certain medicine, you break out in rashes because your body is cleaning out. Well, the same thing, because frequencies is rising and your spiritual awareness is also rising, the negative awareness is also rising also because that has to come out and it confronts you on things that you need to work with. Whereas before, there were certain pathologies that you might think that you were cool with people that automatically tell you you're no good. So now these things are coming out and these particular pathologies are showing you that you need to work with these particular shortcomings, pathologies, and deficiencies. And so this is why you have people now that's very depressed and feeling bad about themselves. That's because the latent arterial motives cannot be hidden now based on the energy. But on the one tip is also too that you can pick up on these two if you're a person that's trying to be, go to the right level. And so now you meet people now that you say, I just can't deal with this particular person. And on the other hand also too, because you have a high frequency, when you come across people that have lower frequencies, they can't deal with you. So therefore you will find out that you'll start losing more and more friends. Losing more and more people. People stop calling. You see, and basically your own energy is filtering out the no good people around you in your life. Because seclusion is a joyous one at this particular time. It's a joyous one at this particular time because it means that you must stay secluded and to not deal with outside influences. Now this doesn't necessarily mean 
staying in your house 24 hours a day, but we're talking about a way of life, a mentality to be on your guard even when you're downtown. Check? Yeah. Okay, so that's, uh, so, so, so based on the, the rock and roll and based on other things, the, they knew based on the Beatles who were members of the OTO, which is the Alistair Crawley's society, as well as most of the British artists were members of secret societies. And the Beatles that put Alistair Crawley on their album, Sergeant Pepper. As a result, as a result, the particular music and other music that came after it, like the Rolling Stones and other, or the British invasion, tore the white man up inside to the point where as the white man turned into a hippie and started rebelling against his racist ass past generation. <laughs> and then the then the 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 the, the, the uh, rise of the great Bo Dunn King, uh, uh, Jimi Hendrix, that really killed him, who put him in altered, um, altered states of consciousness, which is uh, uh, altered states of consciousness, you know, and then they took him out by having the white woman suggest that he take the, the sleeping pills the, the, the sleeping pills to go back and she gave him a higher dosage. She was an agent for the British intelligence because Jimmy Hendrix said, now I have done what I can do basically with the Europeans as far as the rock and roll. He basically taught everybody how to play rock and roll. And then they just started it after that and made it damn near devil music. But if you hear his, it's just another form of high blues. And so uh, uh, another form of high blues. He said, I have done all I can do now and as a result, I'm going back to um, I'm going back to America and hook up with my brothers and sisters because remember he was uh, the Isaac brothers' cousin and he was first playing in a blues band. So he said I'm going back to America to hook up with my brothers and sisters so we can make even greater music. And as a result, the British intelligence said this man is not to ever leave England, and they took him out. But I think he somehow knew this because he wrote about it in his songs that he was going to die, as well as he wrote about the subterranean world spaceships and all of that. As a matter of fact, there's a book called uh, Jimi Hendrix's uh, Star Child. It's put out by a black man. It's a metaphysical book. Um, Jimi Hendrix's Star Child. And in that particular book, he deals with uh, Jimi Hendrix and um, his metaphysical beings. He used to meditate and all types of things. You see what I'm saying? There? And also was, in, was visited by beings of light. You see. So based on this, it got out of hand with them. And then Janis Joplin came up and she was, was basically saying in an actuality that, that basically she was a black woman. She was, no, she was a black white woman. <laughs> I'm a black white woman. You see what I'm saying? And say she used to dream of Aretha Franklin in, in dreams. Anybody ever heard Janis Joplin at all? She tried to sound real soulful. You understand what I'm saying? Then she got taken out, you see. Because she represented the later form of what Hendrix was doing. You see what I'm saying? And as a result, once they took Hendrix out, it jumped, uh, what took Hendrix out, Janis Joplin started hollering around the country and they said, okay. First they separated her from the main group and then she kept on and as a result, they took her out. Because first she changed the country, then she went and fought, and then she went back to the soul, and by that time they took her out also too. So as a result, this particular music tore up the white structure, and by the time the 1980s rolled around, they had to bring white people back into what is called country music. So that's why uh, the guy born in the USA, Bruce Springsteen came out, and it's a borderline country trying to get them back to a, a Jim Crow South type deal. And also John Cougar Mellencamp, borderline country. And now basically the white rock and roll is borderline country music now. Even all these new stars that come out, they have a country sound fused in with a rock sound. And that's to phase out any type of radical element that damn near turn their people out. And as a result, it worked so good until they, they, they froze this stuff until all the hippies that was running around with black people in the doggone 60s is now the state senators and also the freshman class of the Republican Party, these doggone conservatives. Yes. 
You see what I'm saying? And these conservatives. And so as a result, now country music has never been mainstream in America. But now Garth Brooks and them is selling millions of records that would never have done on the proportion of the Beatles and stuff. Randy Travis, Garth Brooks, um, Trisha Yearwood, and all these crackers. You see what I'm saying? They tried to countryfy black music in the late 1970s when they chose the Commodores to make a series of country albums. And in 1979, they made this album walk on down the line. Some junk, and they was debating whether it was a country album. But they started, put one of the country songs on the album, the Brick House album of 87, 77. But they made a complete country album in doggone 78. No, 79. Fused in with soul. And then he left the group and they started, started writing for Kenny Rogers and stuff. Lionel Richie. And as a result, he became one of your biggest stars of the 1980s. But it didn't work for black people. You see what I'm saying? So then they went into Urban Cowboy with, with John Travolta and black people started wearing cowboy boots and cowboy hats in the early 80s. All this was fused to try to bring about a Jim Crow or Antebellum South and trying to bring people back to the American values, which to us, great American values is doggone totalitarianism, slavery, and oppression. To bring them back, and as a result, they, 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 they elected the California Cowboy Reagan to bring back this conservative type thing to bring people back, and basically most white people, they worked it right back into what's going on now. This is very key to set the, the environment for racism that we have today. You see, to set the, uh, 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 the, the environment for racism that we have today. Very key, you gotta understand this particular uh, things that's actually going on here. So now, let's deal with some other things right here that we're gonna um, uh, keep on. So, also, like I said, also, um, the movie North by Northwest is a great Illuminati movie that I also talked about, North by Northwest, which is a movie that you, you need to understand that's dealing with, um, dealing with a certain amount of things. And that particular movie with, 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 with Cary Grant and James Mason, which is also dealing with, he had, Cary Grant had to fight against the Illuminati, and he also had to fight against the UN, which was one and the same. You see what I'm saying? Which was one and the same. Also, Malcolm made the mistake thinking that this new human problem and went to the UN, was saying he wanted to go to the UN. He didn't understand that the UN was started from the Berlin Conference where they carved up Africa. And it's also the UN and that whole thing of recolonization of Africa started and the whole UN thing is all in one deal. John Henry Clark and Dr. Ben talks about that also too. And also there's a, a store in, in right here in New York where you can go and get information on the Berlin Conference, on, on the Berlin Conference also too, which was, the, which was the springboard for the actual UN. You understand what I'm saying? So that, that's very key that you uh, try to next time uh, deal with some Alpha Hitchcock movies. And as a matter of fact, that this, this AMC, American Movie Classics, as well as uh, Cinemax, they're dealing a lot with Alpha Hitchcock movies at this time because Alpha Hitchcock was a master mason of the secret societies. So the reason why he was one of the greatest movie writers for the simple fact that, hell, he could just go into the archives of what the damn Illuminati was doing and pull out a lot of secrets. Yeah. Also, there was a movie, there was a movie, uh, the first part, The Cast of Deadly Spell with the Necronomicon, but the other one, the name of that movie, the one with um, Cheryl Lee Rapp, uh, oh, oh, Witch, Hunt. Witch Hunt. Witch Hunt, it came out in 19, it's an HBO movie with Dennis Harper. It's called Witch Hunt. If you ever get your hands on it, it's an HBO movie, let's say 1994 or 1995. I think it's like 1994. So anywhere from 1993 to 1994, this movie called Witch Hunt with Dennis Harper and Shirley Ralph and a woman named Penelope Ann Miller. Now in this particular movie, it talks about how Hollywood started using magic and Bo Dunn to invoke spirits to somehow get a new atmosphere of magic to write better movies. And as a result, the magic was real hot in Hollywood. But what happened was when it got out of hand and these white people started getting messed up, they put 
One black, they blame one black woman for it, and it's supposed to be Marie Nouveau, played by Sarah Lee Ralph. Although she did beat the, the murder rap, or she did beat the rap in court, it all revolved around her and this particular magic that they tried to blame and all. So you need to see that particular movie, Witch Hunt, with Cheryl Lee Ralph and Dennis Harper. And Dennis Harper is playing H.P. Lovecraft, a detective, as well as the movie Cast the Deadly Spell, where um, um, Fred Ward is playing H.P. Lovecraft, and they're looking for this grand grimoire, this sacred book which is actually the book of coming forth by day, the, uh, the, 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 the uh, book of coming forth by day. Now there's new ordinance that's being passed all over the country. There's new ordinance that's being passed all over the country, laundering laws and stuff to lock up homeless all over the country. And a lot of, lot of laws are now being passed in Atlanta because Atlanta is the new home of the Illuminati, because it's the home of the CDC and all. So a lot of laws are being passed in, 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 in Atlanta. And so they got these ordinances, basically, that any bombs being um, in public places can automatically go to jail. So now it's going to be, and, and it'll spread worldwide. And uh, 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 it will spread worldwide also, too. Also, like I said, that most states now are not part of the country. Most states now are their own country. Their own government and own country. There's no such thing as federal no more. Most of the states now, where the state is actually its own, their own country. That's why California can break a certain laws for the O.J. Simpson trial in Proposition 209. Now, see, this is funny how Timothy McVeigh and them can blow up a building of people, and they haven't gone to trial yet in two years. Yet O.J. Simpson, when his wife died, he's already had four trials. He had the preliminary trial, the murder trial, the suit and the custody trial, four trials, back to back, and Timothy McVeigh and the Unibomber ain't seen no action whatsoever. You see, this is very key that that can happen like that because California is their own state and it can make laws whatever. They have anything to do with federal. Very key that you understand that particular part uh, also too. Also, um. Either you can buy the Kabbalistic 777 by Alistair Crawley or Goldwyn's Kabbalistic Dictionary. Goldwyn's, Goldwyn's a good one. I think it's, I think it's Goldwyn's, isn't it? I think it's Goldwyn's or Goodwin's Kabbalistic Dictionary. Go into that and look at the Kabbalistic numbers of the number 209, which is the Proposition 209 based on affirmative action. You will find that the Proposition 209 and those particular, uh, that 209 that they're talking about in there is actuality is dealing with some metaphysical numbers and some Kabbalistic numbers. You're going to find out that most numbers are basically the white boy fashions most numbers around stuff that he gets out of the Holy Kabbalah, which is a numer numerical breakdown of the Hebrew alphabet. Um, uh, good books to study that is the Alistair Crowley. 777 and other Kabbalistic writings, as well as Golden's Kabbalistic Dictionary, which is a huge volume, and it shows you what all numbers are infinite and what they mean. So Proposition 209, you will understand that those particular numbers that they're talking about there has a spiritual significance with the rise of black people, with the rise of black people. Now, they have already started showing some of you that they have started um, Killing people, the prison guards are now shooting prisoners for sport in the prisons. And they've showed this on TV now where the two guys, three, three black men standing in the courtyard and the prison guards shoot them down for sport because they have already started killing black prisoners also too. And that's, uh, 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 that's very interesting. Now I want to get into some other things right now. I want to get into, I want to get into this because this is very interesting at this particular time, and let me see if I did I have my, my notes. If I didn't have my notes, I, I still, I'll still just deal with it. The part I want to get into here is the mystery of Tarzan. Tarzan was, a, was, was, was dreamed of, I can't think of the author name right now. You remember the uh, author name of Tarzan? No, not Lord Greystone. That was, that, was his, that, was his, that was the mythology he was dealing with. 
His name was, um, I can't think of his name right now, but the author, Edgar Rice Burroughs. Edgar Rice Burroughs dreamed of Tarzan. Now, remember I, I quoted to you something about an eight gene in the white boy being part eight. That's also mentioned in the A.E. Powell's Astro Body, and also if you get the two volumes of, 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 of Madame Blavatsky's Secret Doctrines, which I think that if you got a library in your house, you should not go without having the Secret Doctrines or Isis unveiled. They are encyclopedias of the occult and of the mysteries, and of the mysteries. And all, and so I think that you should buy both the ISIS unveil and the actual secret doctrines because it gives you some adequate information on the Atlantis that the white boy won't tell you about, as well as Rudolf Steiner's Universe, Earth, and Man. You should not. You should have these books in your library. Rudolf Steiner's Universe. Earth and Man, which gives you detailed Akashic Records account of the life that we used to live when we were in Atlantis. As well as another book, Rudolf Steiner's Cosmic Memory, which is detailed accounts of the life that we used to live when we were in Atlantis. These are must-have books. Rudolf Steiner's Cosmic Memory, Rudolf Steiner's Universe, Earth, and Man, and also, also Rudolf Steiner's spiritual hierarchies, as well as Blavatsky's secret doctrines, Isis Unveiled, A.E. Powell's Astro Body, and C.W. Ledbetter, um, C.W. Ledbetter Astro Planes, Annie Bazant, Esoteric Christianity by Annie Bazant that even Dr. Ben mentions in his lecture at, at um, Georgia Tech. See, even Dr. Ben knew this occult stuff. Um, Esoteric Christianity by, by Annie's Bazaar, as well as the hidden keys, the hidden, the hidden mysteries, let's see, the hidden knowledge of the Bible, volume one, two, and three by Hudson. I think his name is Godfrey Hudson, Hudson, Hidden, Hidden Knowledge of the Bible, Volume 1, 2, and 3. These are books that you need to get. Uh, as well as C.W. Ledbetter's Hidden Life in Freemasonry, C.W. Ledbetter's Inner Life, and C.W. Ledbetter's The Hidden Side of Things. C.W. Ledbetter, The Hidden Side of Things. But Dealing with this that you will find in Blavatsky's book based on the ape gene and based on information that she got, in that particular book, Edgar Rice Burroughs had a dream of Tarzan being an ape man. The dream that Edgar Rice Burroughs had was an archetype of a family ge genetic ancestry of the ape. And he was upset because the, he never wanted it to be just the ape man swinging through the jungle. But he wanted an ape man that was an, a brilliant and intellectual person, which he got that wish in 1984 of Tarzan Greystone. The legend of Tarzan, of, uh, uh, Tarzan, the legend of Greystone, uh, Greystoke, excuse me, by uh, starring Dennis no, not Dennis, but Christopher Lambert. Yeah, Christopher Lambert is, a, is, is that particular one. He got that dream. But also, there's been over 30 or 40 cars and movies, TV shows, documentaries that's printed all the way up into 1996. And that is the reason it's the most celebrated mythology of the European because it celebrates his ape origin which we're dealing with genetic archetypes, which is a cross between an ape, a pig, and human genes that makes up this particular information. You see what I'm saying? Also, another celebrated book, the one that's going to be hard to find, but the one that also speaks of the creation of the European is Rudolf Steiner's Atlantis and Lemuria. Rudolf Steiner's Atlantis and Lemuria. 
But Edgar Rice Burroughs saw, had an archetype and a dream of his ancestry, as well as Mary Shelley, Mary Shelley Sprinkenstein, a dream of the creation of the, of the European. Mary Shelley Frankenstein, that in 1984, they made a, a better version of it with uh, Robert De Niro. Also, 1996, The Island of Dr. Moreau, dealing with H.G. Wells, which H.G. Wells was a contemporary of Rudolf Steiner. They were good friends. And so he read Atlantis in the Moria and wrote The Island of Dr. Moreau and the movie The Island of Dr. Moreau that deals with the creation of the white man. So when, they, when this movie was to be treated very careful, they ended up getting the greatest actor that the white man has ever known, Marlon Brando, to play Yakub, the Yakub story. Anybody saw the movie? The Yakub story. It's now on video and it's a movie that's must rent because it shows the last product, which was Yakub's daughter, that she was the one that was the one that was the only one that had gone to the point where he had grafted these animal people up to her, and she was basically a white human. And they had one right before her who was a leopard skin, an uh, animal attack boy, but he was human in, 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 the, in the way he acted. But the daughter was the last product. You see, the island of Dr. Moreau also is, 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 is a must-have movie, as well as H.G. Wells' Time Machine. You see what I'm saying? A lot of knowledge dropped in H.G. Wells' Time Machine also, too. But the Tarzan is very, is, 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 is very, uh, is very uh, interesting at that particular time uh, also, too. So now, um, the recolonization of Africa with Zaire in R Rwanda situates uh, the situation that they need a reason to go into Africa again, so therefore this whole destabilization with Rwanda is this particular situation, and they need a, a, a need to recolonize Africa. Because even in the book Ice, the Ultimate Disaster by Richard Noon, it has already been said that the secret society said that in the last days before it's all over, Africa will be the homeland of the remaining members of the European race. So therefore, the places that's the most richest, Zaire, Rwanda, those particular places is the places that they actually chose, as well as uh, the, uh, what's the guy, Idi Amin's place? Uganda, which they basically killed the majority of the people in Uganda. Most of the adults are dead, based on the AIDS thing. So based, that, based on that, in Richard Noon's book, The Recolonization of Africa. And so therefore, your whole Rwandan situation is based on that recolonization of Africa. You see, very key to understand this, that what's going on. The white man, first of all, Africa has been hit with famines, pestilence, and all of this particular thing the entire 20th century. Why is it the last decade in the 20th century he is concerned with Somalia? He is concerned with Rwanda. The Somalian incident was based on some tablets of Tahuti, which is some ultimate alchemy tablets, the ultimate tablets in alchemy, and some ultimate history of the world that's been documented in a whole entire history of the world with all of its metaphysical meaning and everything, all dark was recorded in Egypt, with Egypt being ransacked and most of the libraries burned, the Library of Alexandria. There was a custodian and a race of people in ancient Punt, which would be Somalia, and Kush, that kept records. So the re so when they went into Somalia, they was trying to get those particular records. That there's a mythology of an ancient people that kept these records up to this day. It's also documented in Gerald Massey's Book of the Beginning, Volume 1, around the first chapter on Egypt. So they went back up into Somalia to find these particular records, these particular records that somehow can save them based on them getting certain mysteries that are lost even to the white man. 
but they couldn't find these records because these particular people are metaphysical beings that can keep these records right in the melanin, which is detailed files if you tap into it the right way. So therefore, they could not find these people. But that is the reason that they were in Somalia the whole time, you see. So this whole thing is a part to actually, actually to recolonize Africa. Also, you know that you can get the Boulay's book, the history of the Negro Boulay's book. You can get that book at Barter's Bookstore. You can order that book at Barter's Bookstore. Uh, it's called The History of Sigma Pi Phi by Charles Wesley. Charles Wesley is the person that wrote the Alpha Phi Alpha, History of Alpha Phi Alpha. But Charles Wesley, you can get the History of Sigma Pi Phi Fraternity which was the book that um, uh, Steve Copeland said was stolen from him. And you can't find any books on fraternities, black fraternities, but this particular book so happens to be at sale, on sale at Borders. Also, some other information, if you want some books that you can't find, I have some other information on how you can trace books. A place called B-A-W-K-E-R-S, Barker's, Barker's Books in Print. Barker's, uh, just Barker's, I don't know, I'm a vast speller. Barker's Books in Print. The number is 1-800-275-2606. 1-800-275-2606. Now you go there and you call this 1-800 number and they'll tell you the books that's in print. If Barkers can locate the books for you, then you can call your local bookstore, whatever one you want to deal with, and you can get this book. So that's why it's crucial to get that book. Emil Bach's book, Apocalypse, the, the, the Apocalypse of St. John, you can get it by calling this particular number, Barkers Books in Print, to get these particular books. You see, so if you have a problem finding this Sigma Pi Phi book, because it is in print, this is the book company that just has everything basically in America and in Europe that's in print that they can get their hands on. Since that being an American book, you won't have any problem getting that particular book. You see what I'm saying? Huh? I'm sorry. The the, the apo it's, called the, it's called The Apocalypse of St. John, the best book ever written on Revelations. The Apocalypse of St. John's by Emil Bach, okay. as well as another great book on Revelation that deals with alchemy. And Revelations is the book, the, the Beginner's Guide to Revelations by Robert Robinson, who is a, is, who is a Hume uh, scholar, you know. Uh, another great book is a woman by the name of Jew, uh, uh, of by, her name is June Singer. June Singer. It's called Seeing Through, Seeing Through the Visible World, which is very key because you're going to find out that this world is an illusion. And so she deals with se several things, and she deals with several things based on the Christ energy. She also deals with Gnosticism. She deals with alchemy, and she has studied melanin. She, uh, so, uh, June Singer, she studied melanin. So anytime you see the words in her book, chaos, she's talking about melanin. Anytime you see the word primal material, that's melanin. Primal material, that's melanin. She has studied melanin. June Singer, seeing through the visible world. Very key book also too. Now, another thing we want to get into is the, is, is the actual thing on 60 Minutes. Remember 60 Minutes came on about two weeks ago or three weeks ago, and they had this woman, this white woman that wrote this book, Not Out of Africa. Challenging the years of study that was put back to wrongs, done right, but started with George G.M. James, all the Afrocentric scholars, and even the white scholar, Martin Bernal. So what happened was is, the white boy understanding that our scholars were very strong waited until the Afrocentric movement petered down some and kind of filtered out to the particular point 
because we get in things and we get interested in it, but after a while, we abandon everybody because we don't want to hear nobody, but we don't understand that the Afrocentric movement should have been as strong as it was in 88, 89, 90, and all with the illustrious scholars because anytime you let up, the white boy is coming back. So the white boy waited until First World is only a small meeting group and the Afrocentric movement was a thing of the early 90s. And then he said, now it's time to hit them. So they pay this woman to write this book. You see, attacking the African origins of ancient Greece. You see what I'm saying? The African origins of ancient Greece. And they pay her to write this book. That's the government set it all up. Now, the way they did Malepi Asante, it's crucial that you don't go on TV to defend yourself. I'll tell you why. First of all, if you go on TV, you always agree the only way I go on TV is if it's live. Because if it's not live, they go in and they edit the, 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 the part and they make you look like a fool. So basically, they went in and they did a hatchet job, and you would think that Malepi Asante is this crazy black man at Temple University that came up with this idea of Afrocentricity. And it's his whole brainstorm alone. So they will make it into this hot, this, this particular crackpot scholar, one person against the whole world. And they don't let you know that there's a whole cadre of, of scholars nationwide and worldwide that deal with this. So they'll just say, oh, this is this man's way to try to do something politically, you see. Then they got the gall to ask him and ask black people, do you think that you learning about your history will help you. Now you wouldn't dare go to the doggone Jews and ask them, do you think learning Jewish culture, the fake Jews, and ask them learning Jewish culture would help you. You see what I'm saying? You wouldn't dare go to the United States government and ask them, would American history help you? But the thing about it is the white man has such a disrespect for black people and a contempt for black people, and he thinks we are inferior because that's his nature, because he's arrogant and he's lacking things, so therefore he has to look down on people because he's inadequate. Until the point where as he can say anything about black people, you understand? Anything he want about black people, and basically, his is the law. Because he is reality, basically. The power to define and make it stick. You see what I'm saying? Then they'll go and get an old black Negro man to talk about, oh yeah, ancient Egypt, these black people, we are Americans and all this kind of thing here. And like I say, we got so many black people to come on TV and sell us out. Until in actuality, I kind of admire the Arabs. Now you don't have to go around killing a lot of people, but you got to make a statement. You put out a couple of million dollars on some Negroes that do you wrong in the public, and this stuff will stop. Because you know, basically the Arabs you just don't say everything you want to say about them doggone Arabs, okay. right? That Solomon Ruskin scared up a whole lot of people. So therefore now, people are really scared on what they say about them, especially when they're dealing with the religion and stuff like that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You can do a lot of stuff, but you can't talk about Allah, you see? And the reason why our people disrespect us is because our people know ain't no price that come down with it. You understand what I'm saying? And so why do you say well, that's kind of drastic what you're saying, but you got to understand when our people, being unhealthy that we are, and we see these particular things on TV, being unstable, you can ruin thousands of black people that was wishy-washy in the first place. Oh, I knew that old African stuff wasn't about nothing. And to give them an excuse to be the idiots that they are. So therefore, you can actually tear the fiber apart of unhealthy people. By us being unstable and unhealthy based on psychological post-servitude black insanity. <laughs> Permanent children, pathological grown-up children at large. Because we're in this particular thing, we need, it's, it's, it's crucial when we see things because it can really damage us. And by coming on that TV, it can go out to thousands and thousands of people that do this thing. Because we don't read, but TV is our thing. You see, so when they put a Negro up there and he'll say things and all, it's got to be a doggone price. You see what I'm saying? But then again, like I say, you wouldn't dare do it to them Jews either. Not at all. Check. So it's just, just to tell you the thing, whereas how now all of a sudden, because we are faddish people and we are into something, and then all of a sudden we abandon it, 
That's a thing in the past now. Now the white boy is always looking. As soon as we grown weak on all the scholarship we put down in the 1990s, in the late, late 1980s, now he can come and strike back. And she writes a book, and they got the food on TV. Have you ever gone to Africa? No. Have you ever gone to Egypt? No. Do you know anything about Egypt? No. But she's a beast. Now here it is. This man is the head of the Afrocentric African Studies Department at Temple. But he's not valid to say what he said. But they say, well, he said, no, Greece was not a miracle that blew up. But the man said, but this woman is a classicist. Now, wait a minute, this man is the head of the department at Temple, but he's not valid. But some white woman that's just a person that studied just like him, oh, she's valid. But that's how the beast is. You see, that's, that's amazing. You see what I'm saying? So that's very, very interesting that this particular thing that we need to actually, uh, that we, we, we need to actually understand what's actually going on. Um... The military fall with the women thing. Ambalaj Mahali said, you'll know the end is over when self accuses self. You see the battle that happened in Congress, that they shut down Congress and all that. Now you see the military, which is both, both of those were hand in hand. And as you can see, this thing is like a nightmare. This is all showing you that there actually walls are coming, coming, tumbling down from within. And if you study any ancient culture, the walls came come tumbling down from within. It's just like Rome was destroyed from inside out. Check. Black people are now turning in drug dealers all across the country. This is this new thing and all. You see what I'm saying? All across the country. Because we are people that think of reactionary things and also always looking at the surface but not the actual cause. And now they are applauding these people. And this is an ongoing thing across the country. Which I'm trying to say is that we got to look at this particular thing, like I said, about this whole dope thing. But my point is, is now this is the new trend that they're getting people, they're trying to get all these people to start doing this particular part at this particular time. When there's 400,000 crack addicts still left in the United States. Amazing. You see. Y'all all right? Now they had this whole life expo in Atlanta on the 20, 20, 22nd to the, I think it was the 22nd through the, to the, through the 24th of November. And all these white people came together with illustrious white metaphysicians and all these people trying to save the planet. And the reason why they did this was because they understand that at this particular time, they have to do something because their hold and their grip is getting ready to be loosened. So therefore, they're having all these, these particular metaphysical scholars that come out from all over. And then not only that, too, they said, well, we got to get somebody black in it to, uh, to, to legitimize it. So as a result, Deborah Blair was a, one of the main keynote speakers, and they was counting on him because they're looking for a messiah, and if they can get the black energy, you see what I'm saying, they can do some things. But my key is, if he don't know, this is one reason why we can't be going to their particular conferences and stuff, because they're doing stuff because they're looking for certain people, and they got five black people to actually speak. But the key was, they had over 200 white people, but that's a lot of people. Can you, can you, understand, can you understand the magnitude of 200 white people, new ages, coming to a conference? City to city. City to city, they got had it in L.A. They had it in Atlanta, and in Atlanta, at the same time, they had a Christian conference that was going on, trying to keep that energy going. But they put Deborah Blair as one of the main keynote speakers, as well as Dr. Andow. But even though they didn't know you can't do that for the simple fact they're trying to use your energy as the battery to actually energize this particular thing to keep things afloat, because they know if you ain't got the black energy in it, there ain't no energy at all. So we got to look out for these particular things that's actually going on at this particular time. You see what I'm saying? Texaco smoke screen. That's just a smoke screen. Pay some Negroes off and all. Like I told you last night, it's a smoke screen to get you from understanding that we are in the realm of black body snatching where 2 million black, 12 million black people are now dead and missing in the United States are in concentration camps. So this is another smoke screen. The, the, 12 million black people, 12 million, 12 million 
Well, like I told you before, how it can be 12 million is because our population is higher than the 30 million that they tell you. If it's 60 million, like I said, it, 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 even, even Jesse Jackson said it was 60 million in 1988. Well, if it's 60 million people and you're still getting reports of 30 or 40 million people, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That means you doggone damn near got 30 million people that you can choose from and kill off. And that's the mindset, because once these statistics come out, you put them in your mind and that's what you go by. You see what I'm saying? That's what you go by. And it's interesting because a white boy was telling me, a white boy, and I think this cracker was a missionary, and he was telling me back, he told me back in 93, that there ain't that many white pe black people in Africa. He said, ain't that many black people left in Africa. So we was arguing him down because we thought he was talking about a political thing to try to, because we was arguing over religion and how Africa is three times bigger than America. But the white boy, really what he was telling us, he was telling us something that he knew when he said, there ain't that many black people left in Africa. You see what I'm saying? He was telling us is that basically what, how much you be in, how much you're in Africa, you're still in only one section at a time. You don't know how many people are missing. And he was actually telling